with only a single day left before the big reveal guys, some of Nvidia's partners such as Sotac and GameWorks seem a bit impatient with Sotac leaking several images of their upcoming cards and GameWorks leaking specifications as well as images for the RTX 3080 as well as 3090. But yeah, before we go ahead and look at that, I quickly want to address the performance for these cards and I seen a few comments asking, you know, how big is the difference between Ampere and Turing and although we aren't 100% sure guys, here's what we are expecting. Now these numbers are based on pretty much all Ampere leaks we gather up so far and as we can see in terms of raw rasterization performance, TP Top 3090 is about 40 to upwards 50% faster than the 2080 Ti whereas the 3080 is about 20% faster. And what's interesting here is that the 2080 Ti and 3080 have the exact same CUDA count number. Now in terms of performance we expect the 3070 to be about as fast as the 2080 Ti depending on what SKU we're looking at because it looks like Nvidia's got two fairly similar models here and right now we aren't 100% sure which one they are planning on releasing by the end of September. Anyway with that said let's have a look at the leaked third party cards guys and by the way I have a question here which card manufacturer makes the best CPU cooler? What brands do you usually pick? I'm very curious to hear you guys' answers here so put them down in the comments below. Now this leak is coming from Video Cards who has put his hands on not just one but two upcoming models from GameWorks who seems to give their top series cards a Phoenix Golden Sample Stamp which uh, historically means uh, you know slightly higher clock speeds out of the box basically. According to many of the previous rumors, GameWorld lists the RTX 3090 with 24GB of GDR6X and 5248 CUDA cores at a 7nm process node and this is most likely N7P EUV from TSMC. As for memory speed, we're seeing 19.5 gigabits per second and with a memory bus width of 384 bits gives us a bandwidth of almost 1TB per second. Now look Looking at the RTX 3080, we see that it takes a nice step up in memory bandwidth stand against the RTX 2000. The biggest problem here is the memory size, we're looking at 10GB of GDDR6X and I don't exactly see who this card is for. I mean we've seen games asking more than 10 gigs of VRAM at 4K, so I'm assuming Nvidia is targeting 1440p at 144fps here. I honestly don't understand why they don't have the 20 gig card available at start. Maybe there's a good reason behind it guys. What do you think? Let me know down below. Now looking at the specifications here we can see that the 3080 matches the 2080 Ti's number of CUDA cores but in terms of RT and tensor core performance many of the upcoming Ampere based cards will be miles ahead of the 2080 Ti. And looking at the product page here we can see that Nvidia refers to them as second and third generation respectively. Now the entire Ampere series is said to make use of the PCIe Express 4.0 interface and we can see that HDMI 2.1 as well as DisplayPort 1.4a being mentioned here. And as for cooling solution, the Phoenix series of the 3090 as well as the 3080 are getting a 3 fan cooler and this should possibly enable turbo frequencies beyond 1700 MHz. Still though to me this sounds a bit low but let me know what you think down below. Low. Now both cards appear to be relatively power hungry where the TGP values and this stands for total graphics power are specified at 320 and 350 watts. However the third party manufacturers seem to stick to the OG dual 8 pin PCIe Express connections instead of Nvidia's 12 pin variant which seems to be exclusive for the reference cards. Sotac does also seem to stick to the old connections but with up to 8 3 pin connectors being used for the TP Top 3090 which is just insane. WCCF Tech has gathered a huge image gallery with the conclusion that SOTAC has at least 8 graphics cards models ready for launch or in the near future. The most powerful cards being the RTX 3090 and 3080 where 3 fans are the keywords for the cooling solution, all of which are coming with different degrees of RGB lightning. The 3070 cards are also visible which takes a step down to 2 fans. So these 
specs for RTX 3090 as well as 3080 should be very close to GameWorks cards regardless of what card maker you end up picking. Where the biggest difference here is going to be the coolers, the number of connections, you know, HDMI connections and display port, as well as the core frequencies of course. Now price levels may obviously also differ. And as I'm recording this guys, the RTX 3090 for example, sitting between $1400 and $2000. And here is my prediction, but we definitely have the answer on September 1st when Nvidia holds the next GeForce event. As always guys, I would love to hear your take on this. 